Okay, now what I'm going to do now is I'm pretty much going to go through the kind of spiel I give to a producer type organization. When I do talk to the students, we start off with the science. We talk about the anatomy and the physiology of smell. And if y'all want to see that, we can go through that too when you're going through the experiment. Okay? If you don't if you've had enough of me, that's that's fine. We'll speed through it quickly. Now, first thing is odors aren't so mysterious. They are mysterious, but they don't need to be because they have a structure and we can measure them. All right, your first question is, how can something we can't see and touch have structure? You know, that, that's a kind of a stupid word. But that's exactly what the perfume people say. Odors have structures. And they've been selling perfume for about 3,000 years. Way back to Egyptian time, they were selling and they had, had to have some way of uh, quantifying what this thing smelled like. How long have we had uh, gas chromatographs? When did they come out? Oh, this is audience participation, by the way. When did gas chromatographs come out? 1900 sometime, probably turn of the century. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, when I was taking organic chemistry in 1980, they were talking about this new thing called a GC mass spec. And now Abby has the major mass spec on NCIS. So we haven't been doing instrumentation. We haven't even had organic chemistry that long. Yet we've been talking about them for nearly 3,000 years. What the perfume people do, they use GC mass spec now. But for hundreds of years before, they had people that were trained to sniff these fragrances, and they would divide a particular fragrance into what they call the notes, the different perceptive parts of the odor. So a trained sniffer might sniff a uh, fragrance called Rose de Grasse, and I don't speak French, so pardon me. He would say it's characterized by the honey note, resembling, resembling very slightly a delicate peppery note. What the heck is he talking about? When I say it has a honey note, what does that tell you? What does that say to y'all? Smells sweet, but not only sweet, it smells like honey, which is a particular kind of sweet, right? And then it has a peppery note. Pepper, in other words, it has a little kick to it. You know, it has a little bite in it. Shading off to a light tonality of natural carnation. What is carnation? It's flower, but it's a particular type of flower. I, you know, I can't describe, but I can say it smells like carnation. When, when the guy has the lapel and you smell his lapel, it smells like carnation. It, possibly, it is possible to receive a slightly green odor. Now, what's a green odor? Come on, speak it out. Moldy? Grassy? Actually, it probably is a little of both, but it's generally the plant-like smells. The grass would be a good, good example of a green odor. So, fragrances are mixtures of notes. That's the first thing to know. And notes are mixtures of odor runs. And I, I, some of y'all know John Sweeten. I could tell you the John Sweeten story about odor runs, but we'll, we'll try to keep this to two hours. If you knew John Sweet, you'd know that it would take more than two hours. Anyway, notes are made up of odorants, and an odorant is a, uh, is a chemical. So if we did put that one green note on major mass spec, we would find all of these chemicals and probably more. And this is where most people trying to talk about odors go wrong, is that they go straight to the, if it wasn't for that darn terpeniol, you wouldn't have any problem with your odors, right? And, you know, most people, college students and or farmers, that's not the way to talk about it. So, Arogo and I were thinking about, first we got to came up with, we had to come up with a good name. We couldn't just say manure smell, because there's other things. We couldn't just say livestock smell. That, I mean, that connotes bad things. We came up with this thing, farmstead. That sounds that's nice, nice Anglo-Saxon word, farmstead. So farmstead odors can also be thought of as mixtures of notes. There's distinct smells within the farmstead odor. And notes are, notes are still groups of odorants. And odorants are still individual chemicals. And as it turns out, there's the five biggies. And usually when I'm talking to the freshmen, they start ne nervously writing. I said, forget that. We're, 
We're just putting that up. You don't even have to remember what the chemicals are. We're, the scheme that I'm about to introduce will get around all of that. Okay, odors have structure, odorants, notes, fragrances. They're also measurable. You can basically describe any type of smell asking four, four questions. What does it smell like? I mean, I, you, I guess you already described it. It smells like a carnation. It smells like honey. Okay? That's a measurement of the character of an odor. Okay? How long does it last is the persistence. Some smells can hang around for a long time. Some smells only last for a little bit. Okay? How many or how much odorants are in the air is the concentration. Okay? It's just basically the volume of odorants out there or the, the mass concentration. But really what we really perceive is not concentration. We perceive a thing called intensity. How strong is it? You can tell me how strong it is, what it smells like, and how long it lasts. You pretty much can describe almost any odor uh, that there is. Okay, we're going to fill up this little chart. We are going to look at the different ways we measure character, persistence, concentration, and intensity for both notes and odors. Remember, odors are mixtures of notes. So we actually measure them quite different. Character of the notes is usually exactly like the perfumers do. We say that it has a honey, a peppery. We just basically say what it smells like. Beyond it smells like pig food. But we break it down into something more concrete. So, getting back to the bad five. What we decided was instead of going back and talking about methanol, formaldehyde, acetone, whatever, we're going to give a color to each one of these notes, each one of these groups of odorants, and we're going to give them, we're going to say it's a note to the group. And I can tell I've already got some perplexed faces. So we already talked about the green notes. And if you remember, a lot of the green notes had alcohols, ketones, aldehydes, esters. Those are the green notes. A lot of farmstead odors, hay, horse manure, have a lot of green notes to it. They have a lot of planty smells. Okay? Then we go look at the organic acids. Uh, when we were starting the project for the, for the pork producers, there was a lot of research that said, you know, hog odor depends on five fatty acids. And they could rattle off what they were. But... Who cares, right? Acetic acid. What is acetic acid? Y'all are educated people. What's acetic acid? Vinegar. What does vinegar smell like? It smells like vinegar, okay? Uh, propionic acid. I have never smelled a butanoic acid. Anybody ever smelled butanoic acid? It smells like feet, yeah. It actually comes from rancid butter. That's where butano comes from. So they isolate that from rancid butter. Capriotic acid. What is Capricorn? It's the goat. Goat smell is actually a fatty acid. So we call the fatty acids, which give kind of the goaty, hoggy type odors, just call them the black nasties and be done with it. Okay, so you've got your greens, you've got your black nasties. Nitrogen compounds, what's ammonia smell like? It smells like ammonia. Ammonia cleanser. Uh, smelling salts are usually strong smells of ammonia, strong salts of ammonia. Some of the amines are kind of fishy, fishy smelling. So we give nitrogen the blue note. Fish, water, blue. It's also, what is scatol? Anybody ever heard of scatol? Anybody know what scat is? No, that's not skunk smell. Scat is another word for your grandma must, may have used it. Actually, uh, wildlife biologists use it all the time. They go through the woods looking for scat. It's another name for excrement. And lo and behold, all excrement has a certain odor, it has a certain blue note, and that's caused by scatol. Almost what, if we identify it as a fecal scent, it's probably got scatol in it. There's another nitrogen compound, putrescine. What does putrescine smell like? That is the smell-o-death, I call it. Okay? 
but that's usually not a farm's dead odor unless you've got uh, dead hog composting or something like that. So the blue notes are nitrogen. Phenolic compounds, they're kind of hard to describe, but they're kind of earthy smelling. Uh, so we give them a brown note. Uh, there's, a, there's some disinfectants that use a phenol compound. And you go into a, ha you go into a my old kindergarten had a kind of a dirty smell. But it was actually the disinfectant they used. And it was a aromatic alcohol, like a phenol. So they're the browns. And then sulfur, what is so hydrogen sulfide? Everybody knows hydrogen sulfide. That's rotten egg smell. Somebody said skunk, it's not scatol, it's methylmercaptan, sometimes called methylthiol. Okay, it's the same thing. Uh, methylmercaptan is also the compound they add to natural gas so you can smell it. And one time in Oklahoma City, well, it was the big tornado we had back in 99, there was a plant, we have a lot of natural gas in Oklahoma, so there was a plant in the east side of town that had a, uh, that had a barrel of methylmercaptan to add to natural gas. And the tornado picked up this barrel, and people were smelling natural gas all the way to Tulsa. But it was just takes a little bit of this stuff. These are usually really smelly. The larger organic sulfides are your garbagey type smells, your rotten garbage. Let's just call them the screaming reds. Okay? So our farmstead odors, the notes are the black nasties, the plants, the blue notes, the earthy smells, in our stream in reds. That's all we need to talk about. Hopefully, I'll get through the rest of this without mentioning another fly. I'll take it back. I know I'm going to say ammonia in a little bit. We can go through this whole thing without talking about chemicals is what I'm trying to say. Okay, persistence. We, uh, you may have gathered by now that perfumers like to use a lot of musical terms. They use notes and whatnot. They also talk about a chord. In other words, good perfume isn't just one smell. It's a mixture of many smells. Okay. And they break it down into three notes, three levels. The top note, which are the really volatile smells that don't last very long. The middle notes, which are they sometimes call them the filler. They're ones that give the perfume the real volume. They fill up the smell. And then the bass note. Sometimes it's spelled like the musical B-A-S-S, -S, bass. It's the, it's the very persistent compounds. Okay? A cheap perfume, if you go to Walmart or a discount store and you buy something that's named after a Disney can Channel character, it's probably all top note. Very volatile, very strong, but you come back two hours later, it's gone. You don't smell anything. You've got to keep putting it on. Okay? Your expensive perfumes are going to have all of these a good cord of different smells. You start out, you put it on in the evening, you smell one way. Toward the end of the evening, you smell a different way. Because you're, you're, through time, you're losing the volatility of these different compounds. Farmstead odors are also like a perfume. We have base notes, which are your black nasties, your earthy smells, your scat type smells, and your garbagey smells. They are the very persistent odor in, in most farm odors. Uh, what we did is we took the chemical rubber company and just looked at the volatility, and we said, here's the continuum from the most volatile to the least volatile, and kind of cut it down into different categories. Is how we came up with this scheme. The middle notes are your green smells, your fishy smells, and your skunky smells. Okay, what can y'all notice about what's happening with them shape with those shapes? The base notes are solid. Are solid. The the middle notes are now big ring or, or thick rings, right? So we got get kind of not only the character, but we can also display the the volatility or the persistence with the shape. We only have two top notes to speak of in farmstead odors, and they're ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. Okay, these are the only the the only of the the, the major odorant groups that are gases under normal uh, temperatures and pressures. So, if I was a poultry farmer 
and I spread my perfume across the landscape, if I went out and I spread some litter, if, if I, an unsuspecting hiker or whatever, walked out on the field, what am I going to smell? Anybody very familiar? Well, you're very familiar with poultry. What's the first thing you smell when you go into a chicken house? Ammonia. You're smelling that top note. It's like the Hanna, Bar Hanna Barbera, the Hanna Montana perfume. You're smelling that top note. It's very strong. You leave, come back an hour later, it's gone. Okay? You're going to smell more of a fishy, planty, skunky smell. It's going to be the major smell you smell. Major smell you smell. Major odors you smell. Notes. You come back two days later, those base notes may still be there. You may have to stick your nose on the ground, but you're going to smell kind of a uh, earthy, scatty, garbagey type smell. It'll be very faint, but it'll still be there. So, I had a student once that uh, she graduated, oh, probably 10 years ago. I saw her. She came to one of our uh, uh, state meeting, state engineers meeting. She says, you know, I can never buy perfume anymore without thinking of that stupid lecture you gave. Because I'm thinking, oh, chicken. 